black is always beautiful when it is situated in the center of a white area today we are going to discuss about the sclera and its examination in ophthalmology for undergraduates and postgraduate beginners welcome back sclera is a avascular structure like the cornea because it is avascular the disease of the sclera or very very rare but still there are some diseases in the sclera which may be blinding the eye let us see the diseases affecting the sclera one by one the first and foremost thing is the blue sclera you can see patches of blue color in the white of the eye this is classical of thinning out of sclera when the sclera becomes thinned out the underlying oval tissue that is the ciliary body and the choroid is seen through that so the sclera appears to be bluish in color or grayish in color it is classical of osteogenesis imperfecta osteogenesis imperfecta is a condition where the bones easily they go in for fracture they are very brittle the next conditions are high myopia in high myopia the eyeball will be bigger the sclera will be thin and it may mimic a blue sclera bufthalmos congenital glaucoma in congenital glaucoma the eyeball will be very big thinning out of the sclera once again leads to blue sclera another most important condition in the sclera is staphyloma what do you mean by staphyloma definition for staphyloma is ectatic cicatrix of the outer coat of the eyeball with incarceration of the oval tissue this is the classical definition what do you understand by this whenever there is disease of the cornea or the sclera that particular disease leads to thinning out of these structures causing them to bulge outwards when they bulge outwards like a balloon automatically the underlying oval tissue that is the iris or the ciliary body or the choroid they also go into the bulge so how it will appear like it will appear like a bunch of grapes when you see the sclera you can see multiple grape like colored structure that is what you see in the sclera this is a classical drawing i have drawn here where the sclera has thinned out and it has bulged into the sclera has gone the ciliary body so you can see the ciliary body on the superior aspect here the ciliary body is gone into the bulge so this is a ciliary staphyloma staphyloma are of five types one is the anterior staphyloma where the cornea and the iris are involved intercalary staphyloma between the cornea and the area of ciliary body this is the ciliary staphyloma next is a equatorial staphyloma and finally is a posterior staphyloma staphylomas are very common in glaucomas they are very common in high myopia even though the sclera is relatively avascular compared to other structures sometimes inflammation of the sclera can occur whenever we think about red eyes we always consider three diagnoses one is an episcleritis second is a scleritis conjunctivitis how to differentiate conjunctivitis from episcleritis or scleritis conjunctivitis there will be dilated tortuous vessels which are diffuse and they have a arborizing pattern that is the vessels they cross each other but in episcleritis and scleritis the vessels they are radially arranged the second differentiating point is in conjunctivitis if you just try to move the congested vessels it will move along with the conjunctiva 
But in episcleritis and scleritis, we move the conjunctiva, the underlying vessels, they don't move. This is how conjunctivitis is differentiated from episcleritis and scleritis. Next, coming to episcleritis and scleritis, what is the difference? Usually, episcleritis and scleritis are sectoral. Very rarely, it will be diffuse. They will be sectoral. And as I already told, the vessels will be arranged in a radial pattern. But the redness in episcleritis will look like a red color. But the congestion in scleritis will look in a purple color. Next point to differentiate between episcleritis and scleritis is Putting a drop of 2.5% phenylephrine into the conjunctival sac will lead to blanching of this episcleritis. But this purplish congestion will not blanch with 2.5% phenylephrine. What are the other points to differentiate between episcleritis and scleritis? Episcleritis, the symptoms will be very mild. The pain will be very less. It will not be tender. But scleritis is very painful and the inflammation of the sclera is continuous with the inflammation of the uveal tissue. So associated uveitis will be there and patient may present with defective vision also. Inflammatory conditions of the sclera is most often associated with Connective tissue disorders of the body like rheumatoid arthritis, polyarthritis nodosa, SLE, vigenous granulomatosis, DLE. Sometimes in episcleritis and scleritis, you may see a nodule in the center of the disease area and which will be surrounded by radiating vessels. It has to be differentiated from a pingicula a bite out spots. Scleritis, there is one type of scleritis called as necrotizing scleritis which can lead to staphyloma of the eye. Already we have told what is staphyloma. Scleritis can also lead to staphylomas in the eye. Even though the sclera is a avascular structure and very few diseases are in it Sometimes the scleral diseases can lead to blindness. With this, we will stop here. We will see about examination of the cornea in the next video. Thank you.